Last Sunday morning, I was waking up early. That was on Saturday, this vision. On, I've always wearied. I've always thought of dying. At me being 50, it's, my time is not, didn't think was too long. And I wonder what I would be in this theophany, celestial body. Would it be that I'd see my precious friends and say a little white fog going by and say, there goes Brother Neville, or he couldn't say, hello, Brother Branham, and when Jesus come, then I'd be man again. I often thought that I was dreaming that I was out west, and I'm coming down to a little sagebrush place, and my wife was with me, and we'd been trout fishing, and I stopped and, and uh, opened up the gate, and the skies were so pretty. They didn't look like they do over the valley here. They were blue in the pretty white cloud. And I said to wife, I said, we ought to have been out here a long time ago, honey. She said, for the children's sake, we should have been, Billy. I said, that's right. I woke up. I thought, I'm streaming so much. I wonder why. And I looked down and she was laying by me. <clears throat> and I raised up on my pillow as many you people have done, put my head up on the, the headboard of the bed and put my hands behind me. And I was laying there like this and I said, well, I just wonder what it will be the other side. I am already 50 and I haven't done nothing yet. If I could only do something to help the Lord for I know I won't be mortal. Half of my time is gone at least, or more than half, if I live to be as old as my people. Still half my time is gone. And I looked around, and I was laying there fixing to get up. It's about 7 o'clock. I said, I believe I'll go down to church this morning. If I am hoarse, I'd like to hear Brother Neville preach. So I, I said, Are you awake, honey? And she was sleeping very soundly. And <clears throat> I don't want you to miss this. It has changed me. I can't be the same brother of Branham that I was. And I looked. And I heard something kept saying, You're just starting. Press the battle. Just keep pressing. Yes. I shook my head a minute. And I thought, well, I probably just thinking like this, you know, your persons can get some imaginations. And I said, I just probably imagine that. It said, press the battle. Keep going. Keep going. I said, maybe I said it. And I put my lips within my teeth and put my hand over my mouth. And there it come again and said, just keep pressing. If you only knew what was at the end of the road. And it seemed like I could hear Grim Snelling or somebody that sang that song like this. He sings it here, Anna Mae and all of you all. I'm homesick and blue. And I want to see Jesus. I would like to hear those sweet harbor bells chime. It would brighten my path and would vanish all fears. Lord, let me look past the curtain of time. You've heard it saying here at the church. And I heard something say, would you like to see just beyond the curtain? I said, it would have helped me so much. And I looked in just a moment. I One breath, I'd come into a little place that slanted. I looked back, and there I was laying on the bed. And I said, this is a strange thing. Now, I would not want you to repeat this. This is before my church or my sheep that I am pastoring. Whether it was I was in this body or out, whether it was a translation 
It wasn't like any vision I ever had. I could look there and I could look here. And when I hit that little place, i never seen so many people come running, screaming, Oh, our precious brother. And I looked in young women, maybe in their early 20s, 18 to 20, they were throwing their arms around me and screaming, Our precious brother, here come young men in the brilliance of young manhood and their eyes glistening and looking like stars on a darkened night, their teeth as white as pearl, and they were screaming and grabbing me and screaming, Oh, our precious brother. And I stopped and I looked and I was young. I looked back at my old body laying there with my hands behind my head. And I said, I don't understand this. And these young women throwing their arms around me. Now I do realize this is the mixed audience. And I say this with the sweetness and with the mellowness of the spirit. Man cannot put your arm around women without uh, a human sensation. But it wasn't there. There was no yesterday or tomorrow. They didn't get tired. They were... i never seen such pretty women in all my life. They had a hair way down to their waistline, long skirts to their feet, and they were just a hugging me. It wasn't a hug like even my own sister sitting there would have hugged me. They were not kissing me, and I was not kissing them. It was something that I, I have not got the, the vocabulary, I haven't got the words to say. Perfection wouldn't touch it. Suburb wouldn't even touch it nowhere. It was something that I never, you just have to be there. And I looked this way and that way and they were coming by the thousands. And I said, I, I don't understand this. I said, well, they, and here come hope. That was my first wife. She ran and never said my husband. She said my precious brother. And when she hugged me, there was another woman standing there that hugged me and then Hope hugged this woman. And each one, and I thought, oh, this has to be something different. It, it can't be. There's something... Oh, would I ever want to go back to that old carcass again? I looked around there and I thought, what is this? And I looked real good and I, I said, I, I can't understand this. But hope seemed to be like a, a, a guest of honor. She was no different, but just like a guest of honor. And I heard a voice then that spoke to me that was in the room said, This is what you preach was the Holy Ghost. This is perfect love. And nothing can enter here without it. I am more determined than ever in my life that it takes perfect love to enter there. There was no jealousy. There was no tiredness. There was no death. Sickness could never end there. Mortality could, could never make you old. And um, they could not cry. It was just one joy, oh, my precious brother. And they took me up and set me up on a great big high place. And I thought, I am not dreaming. I'm looking back at my, my body laying down on the bed. And they set me up there and I said, oh, I shouldn't sit up here. And here come women and men from both sides just in the bloom of youth screaming. And one woman was standing there and she screamed, Oh, my precious brother. Oh, we are so happy to see you here. I said, I don't understand this. 
And then that voice that was speaking from above me said, You know, it is written in the Bible that the prophets were gathered with their people. And I said, Yes, I remember that in the scriptures. Said, But this is when you will gather with your people. I said, Then they'll be real. And I can feel them. Oh, yes. I said, But I, there's a millions. There's not that many Branhams. And that voice said, They're not Branhams. Them's your converts. Amen. That's the ones that you've led to the Lord. And said, Some of them women there that you think is so beautiful were better than 90 years old. When you led them to the Lord, no wonder they're screaming, Our precious brother. And they screamed all at once that if you hadn't have went, we wouldn't be here. I looked around and I thought, Well, I don't get it. I said, Oh, where is Jesus? I want to see him so bad. They said, now he's just a little higher, right up that way. Said, someday he will come to you. See, said, you were sent for a leader. And God will come, and when he does, he'll judge you according to what you taught them. First, whether they go in or not, we'll go in according to your teaching. I said, oh, I'm so glad. If Paul, does he have to stand like this? Does Peter have to stand like this? Yes. I said, then I preached every word that they preached. I never did it from it one side to the other. Were they baptized in the name of Jesus Christ? I did too. Were they taught the baptism of the Holy Ghost? I did too. Whatever they taught, I did too. And then people screamed and said, we know that and we know we are going with you someday back to earth. Said, Jesus will come and you will be judged according to the word that you preached us. And then if you are accepted at that time, which you will be, and said, then you will present us to him as your trophies of your ministry. Said, you will guide us to him. And all together we'll go back to the earth to live forever. I said, do I have to return back now? Yes, but keep pressing on. I looked and I could see the people just as far as I could see still coming, wanting to hug me, screaming, our precious brother. Just then a voice said, all that you ever loved. And all that ever loved you, God has given you here. And I looked and here come my old dog come walking up. Here come my horse and laid his head upon my shoulder and nickered. Said all that you ever loved and all that ever loved you, God has given them into your hand through your ministry. And I felt myself move from that beautiful place. And I looked around. I said, are you awake, honey? She's still asleep. And I thought, oh, God. Oh, help me, oh, God. Never let me compromise with one word. Let me stay right straight on that word and preach it. I don't care what comes or goes, what anybody does, how many souls of Sons of Kish rise, how many of this, that, or the other. Let me, Lord, press to that place. All fear of death. I say this is my Bible before me this morning. I've got a little boy there, four years old, to be raised. I got a nine year old girl and a teenager that I'm thankful for that's turned the way of the Lord. God, let me live to bring them up in the admonition of God. And above that, the whole world seems to scream to me. Ninety-year-old women and men and all kinds. If you hadn't have went, we wouldn't have been here. God, let me press the battle. But if it comes to dying, I am no more uh, it would be a joy. It would be a pleasure.
to enter from this corruption and disgrace. If I could make up yonder 100 billion miles high, a square block, and that's perfect love. Each step this way, it narrows until we get down to where we are now. It would be just merely a shadow of corruption. That little something that we can sense and feel that there's something somewhere we don't know what it is. Oh, my precious friend. My beloved, my darlings of the gospel, my begotten children unto God, listen to me, O oh pastor. Amen. You, I wish there was some way I could explain it to you. There's no words I couldn't find and it's not found anywhere. But just beyond this last breath is the most glorious thing that you ever heard. There is no way to explain it. There's no way I just can't do it. But whatever you do, friends, lay aside everything else till you get perfect love. Get to a spot that you can love everybody, every enemy, everything else. That one visit there to me has made me a different man. I can never, never, never be the same brother Branham that I was. Whether the planes are rocking, whether the lightnings are flashing, whether the spies has a gun on me, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. I'm going to press the battle by the grace of God. Well, I preach the gospel to every creature and every person Amen. that I can, persuading them to that beautiful land on earth. It may seem hard. It may take a lot of strength. I don't know how much longer. We don't know, physically speaking, that from my examination of the day, he said, you've got 25 years of hard, good life. You're solid. That helped me. But oh, that wasn't it. That isn't it. It's something within here. This corruption has got to put on incorruption. This mortal's got to put on immortality. Amen. Sons of Kish may rise. I have all the good things they do. I have nothing evil to say against it. Given to the poor and to charity. And remember, why Samuel told Saul, you will also prophesy. And many of those men are great mighty preachers, can preach the word like archangels. But still it wasn't God's will. God was to be their king. Brother, sister, you let the Holy Spirit lead you. Let us bow our heads just a moment.